the racetrack trying to hang on and now he's dropping back as his momentum is gone. The problem is there's, there are trucks up there. You know most of these trucks have run by themselves all day in practice. Now we have all sorts of trucks all over the racetrack. Too wide through the quad oval once again. Matt crafted in the 88 on the outside. Trying right. to get by Brad Sweet. Good run by Nelson Piquet Jr. from the high side coming off of, off of turn number four to get by Brad Sweet. Busher going for the lead on the outside. Clint Boyer in the two falls to second now as James Busher takes over the point position. See how loose this truck gets <laughs> with Clint Boyer stuck up by his tailgate. Did you see all those guys in those trucks? You can see all three of the first three trucks really having to drive the heck out of those things. I think Kimmy got in the wall, guys. Kimmy got in the wall once again. We saw him scrape the wall earlier in practice. Look at him trying to catch that truck. He got loose, had to chase it up the hill and ran out of room, made some contact. Watch this from his onboard camera. Just watch and listen. happens quickly but I don't think that was enough to mess up his whole night Phil he can get to pit row they maybe pull out on that right front it doesn't even look like the right front fenders beat in very badly so he's still learning he's still okay we can still get some good laps here and try to figure this deal out check out this battle for the top five trucks all glued together Calvish looks fast he's looking on the inside of Austin Dillon couldn't make it work there Austin Dillon running a little higher line now through three and four brings it back down in front of Kyle Busch Again, Bush running in the fifth spot. Out front is James Busher, Clint Boyer, Timothy Peters, Austin Dillon, and Kyle Bush are top five. James Busher's best career finish, second, New Hampshire last year, has shown promise at virtually every racetrack he goes to. We know he's a great qualifier, has had some great finishes, hasn't, hasn't quite put it together yet for that first win, but. Tonight may be the night. Well, he was close up in New Hampshire, though, wasn't he? Sure was. Really battling for that victory late in the going. We talk about this racetrack. Michael, several of these trucks have already run faster than what the pole was in qualifying. And that's why it's so confusing for the teams. They know the speeds are going to pick up, so they got to adjust their trucks for that. But then they're going to throw qualifying right in the middle of all of it, and you've got to make a good lap there. You set him up for that good runoff here. You're way better than everybody else is, too. It's four. He's bottling you up. It's a relatively short race, so starting up front's important, so these teams had to focus a little bit on qualifying. 200 miles, 134 laps, of which were on lap seven. Talk to Austin Dillon just before we got underway as we continue to watch him running fourth, running the high side of the racetrack. He said he thought he had a really, really good truck. Had a great run with a top five finish last week at Dover. Looking to follow it up here. The thing that I like about Charlotte Motor Speedway, you see already guys can run the bottom of the racetrack, guys run in the middle, guys are even running up high. We got problems on the racetrack. Bodine into the wall. Boy, the mile and a half magic is not going to work out for Todd Bodine. That's us, guys. Left front damage. A lot of damage to that Jermaine Toyota. Tom Bodin was running 13th when he came off the turn and into the inside wall. And big damage to the left front of that truck. Take it to the garage. That was Mike Hellman, Jr., crew chief. Stop here. Let me look at it. Get ready to go to the garage. Yeah, we definitely are going to the garage with this baby. Yeah. He hit really hard. It's not going to be number 13 for Tom Bodin, a mile and a half. I can't believe the start of the season this team has had. Wow. Let's take a look at what happened here. See him right? He's right there running in the middle of the racetrack. Just got loose. We talk about these trucks being so loose. He got it down out of traffic, but unfortunately, pretty significant contact with the inside safer barrier. What a surprising start for Todd Bodine in the 2011 season as he's trying to defend his title. He has only one finish better than 14th this year. No one would have predicted that. You just wonder this far into the season with with those poor finishes is is this championships over. I think for it 2011. is. I think tonight had to be a big night for this team. They've been struggling and now they're into the wall on a mile and a half track. Crew looking at it on pit road trying to determine if they could go back out on the racetrack or have to make that hard left turn into the garage. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Charlotte. Work continues on this Germain.com Toyota Tundra of Todd Bodine. They are putting bare bond on the left front. They've had to remove a good bit of the front grille and the left side of the spoiler. They're hoping to get him back out without having to go to the garage to do any more work. But Todd Bodine already two laps down early on here tonight. Hermie? Yeah, Ray, uh, James Busher qualified fifth. He's already up to the front position. A little bit free on the racetrack. He stayed on the track, but real quickly, Max Pappas and Justin Lofton both pitted. Uh, the nine truck got a track bar adjustment and some Sunoco fuel. Rick? Thanks, Herbie. Field coming back through the quad oval. James Busher chooses the outside line. Green flag back in the air. I think you're already seeing some of that wheel spin I told you about, Phil, early in the going here. Austin Dillon didn't get the start he wanted. We saw Todd spin his on the start. It's really difficult to get going, especially with these hot tires with all these trucks staying on the racetrack. We saw James Busher make the pass on the outside of Clint Boyer. He chooses the outside line for the restart and still battling with Boyer for the lead. Boyer has the edge now as he goes through three and four. How about that green truck? A little bit different color for Kyle Busch. He's on the inside of Busher now trying to. Oh, somebody bounces off the fence. Coming out of turn four, it is slippery. Busher drops back to second. Kyle Busch is third. Timothy Peters fourth. Austin Dillon fifth. Kyle Busch gets a good run through the center of the corner. Busher hangs tough on the outside. He's getting a little bit of drafting help from Timothy Peters. Timothy pushing Busher along. That's making his truck faster on the straightaway, and he does clear Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch trying to hug that white line as they come out onto the quad oval once again. Timothy Peters with a great run, has the momentum, goes by Kyle Busch, takes over that third spot. I'm liking that high side up off of four so far, Mikey. I just love the fact that we're at a track again this week where these guys and girls have all kinds of options. They can run high, they can run low, anything will work. Just take your truck where it handles the best and you can get grip there. Lining up now, Jason White, the 23 on the inside of that 88 of Matt Crafton. Those two are side by side. Here comes Kimi Raikkonen in the 15, moving by TJ Bell in the 50. Good corner for yeah. Kimi there. I believe somebody's figuring this thing out. Johanna Long just in front of him in the 20. I think he's going to learn that running into the wall in NASCAR is not a bad thing. <laughs> Still out front, Clint Boyer in the two. Right behind him, James Busher in the 31. Here comes Peters right up to join that battle. And there's Kyle Busch, NOS Energy Drink, number 18. Kimi Raikkonen whoa, 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 whoa. loose, chasing that truck up the racetrack. Oh, no, come on. Keep Good job. Clear all around. All clear. All clear. Well, not all clear. Relatively clear. That That's a situation again, Phil. We saw it earlier in practice today. He gets that truck in a really bad shape, but he's able to save it and drive through it. And that means he, he can check another learning experience off. He has Good never job. felt. He has never felt arrow loose before in a truck. He'd never had that sensation, and that's what happened right there. She took the air off of him. He about wrecked, but he kept from hitting her, and he kept the truck going straight. That was the worst possible scenario. He's fighting a loose truck anyway, and when you get down on the inside of another vehicle, it just compounds the situation. Again, another battle for the lead. Here comes James Busher. He looks to the inside this time of Clint Boyer. And Busher will take the lead away from Boyer. Like Clinton might have, had a, over here. might have had a challenging one and two down there at the other end. Now he's going to fight back to the inside of him, and Clint Boyer will lead this lap. Clint Boyer takes the spot back as they cross the stripe. Here comes James Busher on the outside, trying to keep the momentum up in his exide number 31. Boy, he certainly does. What a great corner that time for James Busher. Clears Clint Boyer by two truck links now as they rock it into turn number three. Now Kyle Busch is going to run that outside line and see if he can do something with Timothy Peters. Not able to do it on that end of the racetrack. Let's we'll see what happens when he gets down to one and two. You know, Kyle Busch currently running in the fourth spot. Before the caution came out, he was not happy at all with the handling of his truck. And this is what he had to say over the radio. This, this is pathetic. Like, they shouldn't drive away from me like this. Well, I think everybody is struggling to some degree, certainly with this racetrack. Kyle's moved uphill now. Look at the input he's putting in that steering wheel. He's moved up on the high side trying to clear these guys. Obviously, he's as fast as a leader. He's running right there with him. 
On the other side of the screen, you see Kimmich down to the bottom again, making a move on the inside of Justin Lofton. I'm telling you, he is making some moves and passing some trucks. Looking pretty impressive. Right. When Kyle Busch just came on the radio a moment ago, he said, if I get up tight on the rear end of another truck, it feels like I'm riding. Oh, Hornaday goes sideways. Hornaday around on the racetrack. It doesn't look like he's going to make any contact with the walls or other trucks. So just a spin for Ron Hornaday. We're all good. We didn't hit nothing, Jeff. He was running Everybody in a nice car. Make sure we don't blow a fender or something off of it here. That's the kind of thing that helps you win a championship right there. You go for a long spin down the back straightaway at Charlotte and don't hit anything. That's a major break. We saw Tabo Ryan spin coming up of turn number two and made contact with an inside wall. Fortunately for Ron Hornaday, no contact. You see him taking it very, very easy around so he doesn't tear up any fenders. See him right on bottom of the racetrack underneath Brad Sweet. It slides up. It just to stay off of Brad Sweet. He had to cut it to the left, and it just wouldn't hold. Exactly what Raikkonen went through down here in turn four, Ron just didn't get away with it. Well, he did get away with it, but he spun doing so. What a nice job by Matt Crafton. Watch Matt Crafton in that bright yellow number 88. Look how far Ron wobbles before he finally goes around. I mean, Matt has to hit him here, right? He has to hit him. How about Miguel Paluto? Way down to the bottom of the racetrack, avoids him underneath. Now, we talked about before the race track conditions and how tough this place is. Todd Bodine, our defending champion, spins and crashes. One of the Ron best on Hornaday, mile and a half four time champion. Yeah. Ron Hornaday, one of, one of only two guys that have won here more than once, he spins around. Kimmy's out there saying, what's wrong with these silly trucks? I can't get it to go straight. Well, he's got to feel a lot better when he knows that people that know what they're doing in this deal are losing control. On to pit road come our lead trucks. James Busher stays out. They're led on pit road by the two of Clint Boyer. Herming. Yeah, the 60 of Cole Wins coming to pit road. His truck has been very loose so far in this run. They're going to do an air pressure adjustment in Sunoco fuel, right? Down on my end, Clint Boyer said, I'd like to have a track fire adjustment and maybe even go with a spring rubber. But they said, no, let's do two tires. He will get out right in front of the 66. Man, they almost had contact between he and Justin Marks, but a two tire stop for the Ollie's Bargain Barn Chevy. A lot of strategy here early in the going, guys. Two tires. A couple no of our tires. leaders, James Bush and Timothy Peters, stayed out. Watch this move here. Boyer takes a shot at getting out of the pit right in front of Justin Marks. Watch how close this is. Mm. A good heads-up move by Justin Marks to get stopped and let Clint Boyer get by. KHI co-owner Kevin Harvick on top of the pit box watching his driver, Clint Boyer, pilot that number two. Stay with us. Tonight, racing's brightest stars come out for the biggest party in racing. Tune in as Jamie McMurray and Casey Kane stop by a special all-star edition of NASCAR Trackside. That's tonight, 11 Eastern, only on Speed, the Motorsports Authority. The Aaron's lucky dog goes to the 29 of Parker Kligerman. He'll get a lap back. And now let's go to Herman. Thank you, Rick. And the reason he got a lap down is he pitted under green the lap before Ron Hornaday spun to bring it the caution. They had a right rear tire going down, so they came in, put two right side tires on. Good break for him. He gets his lap back. And on another, the note on the 33 truck of Ron Hornaday, he obviously came in, got tires, had to go to the tail end of the longest line anyway, so he came back in again last time by, topped off with Sunoco fuel. Again, Ron Hornaday went around most recently, bringing out our most recent caution. Field all in line behind James Busher and Timothy Peters as the green flag comes back out. James Busher on the outside, Timothy Peters on the inside, battling for the top spot. Smoker behind him. I think there was contact there. That's Miguel Paluto. Miguel Paluto looks as though he might have just still blown coming. the motor. They're still coming. They're still coming. Okay, go to the bottom. Get on the apron. Go to the bottom. Get on the apron. Get on the apron. All right, tell him. We stay green. The battle continues up front. Timothy Peters on the bottom of the racetrack. Oh, out, back it down tight. Back and down. now the caution comes out. It is the third caution of the night, this time for Fluid on the racetrack. Yeah, good call, I think. It looked like yeah. there may have been something coming here from the Dallas truck. You see the right rear tire, how shiny it yep. is. That means there's obviously some fluid, probably oil. You see the smoke coming out of the tailpipes there. That's an indication of a valve breaking, Phil. And you can do that if you miss a shift or have to be running right now, Miguel? Oh, there 2,000 RPM. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's that's going right. to be terminal right there. Nurse it back here, best you can. You got oil pressure? 220. That's a lot. That's oil temperature. Yeah. Terry Cook was asking if he had oil pressure, but that's uh, that was oil temperature, 220 degrees.